What's going on, YouTube? Today we got North London's Bloody Gang War, OFBV, and Nine. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Let me pull my seat up. You know what I'm saying. Switch sweaters on y'all, motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying. Um. Yeah. Like I just said. Oh yeah. My fault. My fault. My fault. I got my fault. First reaction of the day. You know what I'm saying. Bear with me. Bear with me. At the end of the video, the last uh, London Bloody Gang War that I react to will be at the end of the video. Stay tuned for that. We're going to split this one into three parts, y'all. Yeah. Parts of 25 minutes apart, you know what I'm saying? Like the video, comment, subscribe if you're new. You're on the road to being subscribers, turn on post notifications. You know what I'm saying? Without further ado, man, let's get into it. Let's get into it. I'm here in the O, but I'm not talking about O Block in Chicago. I'm talking about the Broadwater Farm Estate in Tottenham, North London, home of the famous drill crew OFB, who over the past few years have been involved in a bloody feud with another group of rappers from a nearby area. With the details about the tit for tat back and forth going on between this group playing out in UK drill songs, with fans, feds, and internet neeks like myself desperately pouring over the lyrics, trying to discover what is really going on in these streets. Thankfully, some of the biggest rappers from these areas have been able to get out through music, bagging number one records fault, and albums, along with putting millions of pounds in their savings accounts. But for others, being real in the music and being real it in the streets now. is one and the same. With some promising young rappers from this area oh, yeah, sat in jail today, facing multi-decade sentences for crimes they had done in the streets. But that's the reality of life at the bottom in North London. Shootings, stabbings and disappearances, many of which leave the police baffled as to who is really responsible. All the while, drill rappers drop banger songs with numerous hints that seem to suggest what is really going on in these streets. So today, once and for all, I'm going to break down to you guys the true and shocking story of UK drill in North London. Police were called here to the Broadwater Farm Estate just before 1am this morning to reports of gunfire. When they got <laughs> here, they discovered three individuals who had been well, shot yeah. at. They include a 19-year-old man and two boys, 15 years of age. First contact. Hello, yes, I think there's been a shooting at Wood Green. Um, sorry, I've been what, to sorry? Um, I heard some gunshots fired. Mm. Like somebody on a moose fight. Hello, Met Police. Someone has been shot dead at Hollywood Green Cinema in Wood Green. I've been shot and the guy's not moving. I've got stabbed. Where are you, mate? Jet Mary's called. Jet Mary. I'm dead. Where young people feel scared to go to Wood Green and Wood Green young people feel scared to come to Tottenham. That should not happen in London. OFB stands for Original Farm Boys. The farm is a reference to the notorious Broadwater Farm Estate, which is based in the N17 Postal Code. In the 80s, this was one of London's most dangerous estates. And for decades now, gangs have been a well-documented part of life on this estate. This includes the Tottenham Mandem, an infamous crew of Tottenham-based Gs who were being extensively investigated by London's Met Police for decades specifically Operation Trident, the Met Police's specialised unit aiming to tackle gun crime in the black community. But some people might argue that while trying to tackle gun crime in the community, the Met Police maybe committed a few gun crimes of their own. As Tottenham resident and alleged member of the Tottenham Mandem Mark Duggan was named by this unit as one of Europe's most dangerous criminals, a few years after the police shot dead an unarmed Mark Duggan in 2011 after receiving intelligence that he was in possession of a weapon. The funeral of a black man shot by the police might imply many things. The police insist Mark Duggan was armed and a direct threat before they shot him in the chest. His family say he was killed in cold blood. Mark Duggan's murder by the police was followed by days of community unrest slash intense rioting as the police refused to accept what they'd done to the community, even sending out a Niki copper to read a pre-written statement to explain why the killing was supposedly okay, while surrounded by angry members of the public screaming that they're a bunch of murderers. No officer steps out at the start of the day to run an operation that results in someone Anywho, setting aside the tragic case of Mark Duggan, as the years went by, many different street crews would emerge and
and lay claim to the territory in Broadwater Farm and the surrounding Tottenham areas. With several crews like Bloodline and Stargang emerging who would use the colour red to identify themselves, shaping themselves around the American Blood Gang, despite having no official affiliation with them. And this is something that rappers from this area continue to do to this day, with Band OK's recent summer smash slide being notable for its extensive use of the Bloods red paisley. Anywho, in the late noughties and early 2010s, some of the people that had been involved with gangs on these estates started to form their own musical movements. Initially, there was the North Star music group in the noughties, and then the next generation of Tottenham-based rappers represented under the Star Gang. And this is where infamous drill rappers Heady One and RV come into the picture. Repping Star Gang heavy in their early work, which is why you'll see their starish branding on a lot of their early projects and mixtape cover arts. But this was before UK drill was even a thing. And back in the 2010s, Heady, RV, and the other OFB pioneers were doing what's called road rap, a subgenre of British gangster rap where UK rappers would rap over American beats, spitting facts about the gritty realities of life on the streets where they're from. Problem is, the booming UK drill sound that everyone around the world can't get enough of hadn't been invented then. So Heady One wouldn't truly flourish as a rapper for many years because his time doing road rap with the Star Gang would be cut short when he was caught in 2014 with over 30,000 pounds of smack and crack. This left Heady One being sentenced to a 30 month stint in jail, but while he was away, another Broadwater Farm rap legend emerged. The deep voiced driller that some people call the original Pop Smoke, Abracadabra, would pick up the mic and start rapping, releasing his hit song, Robbery. This track would get an all star UK remix from British rap legends Crept and Conan, with that remix sitting today at a healthy 26 million views. With Abra evolving beyond the Star Gang yes, moniker sir. that had been popular on the Broadwater state before, forming the new musical crew Unto Nation. But this was 2016, and around this time, UK drill was just beginning to find its signature sound. And things would go to the next level musically in 2017 when Heady One was released from jail. Reuniting with his day one homie RV, beginning to drop back-to-back -back drill bangers and freestyles under the collective name OFB, and the 2017 Tim Westwood OFB Crib Session freestyle set would introduce fans to a whole raft of rapping OFB members, many of whom would go on to drop classic songs of their own right. This includes people like Low Key and Kush, and waiting in the wings was a lineup of elite teenage drill rappers just waiting for their opportunity to jump on the mic too, and eventually the world would be introduced to the OFB youngers. People like Boogie B, Band OK, who is actually Mark Duggan's son, Double L, and SJ. I mean, I swear, I don't know how they keep finding rappers on this estate. It's like Pokemon Gold. I'm out here trying to catch them all. And as time went on, we would see more and more OFB rappers introduced to the public conversation. Ispop, Desi, Trapo, Brad, DSAT, Axe. I mean, I'm sorry if I've forgotten any of you, but there really is a lot of OFB rappers. And I know that some of the ops like to say OFB has too much rappers, but when they're all this talented, I say hell keep them coming. But interestingly enough, OFB aren't the only tough guys around Tottenham, as historically they have been linked to another terrifying group in the area known as NPK or the Northumberland Park Killers. I seen somebody say that in the comment section too. I ain't know what the fuck you talking about. Killers. <laughs> MPK are a crew hailing from Northumberland Park and around Park Lane. The area they're from seems the same Tottenham N17 postcode as OFB, with Northumberland Park train station only about 10 minutes away from Broadwater Farm on Ped, but another difference with MPK is that they rock purple bandanas instead of red, distinguishing them from the blood-inspired sets in nearby areas. But don't get the colour difference twisted. This group has a long heritage of association with the Red Bandana Tottenham Crews. Formerly being considered a part of the Tottenham Mandem crew back in the day, eventually MPK branched off and started their own group. And just like Back and Not Nice, MPK really did live up to their name back in the day. It's been said that MPK based affiliates in the Tottenham area had something to do with the 2007 murder of Gary Guthrie outside of a nightclub, and they had a vicious early beef with Edmonton based group the Shank Stars. With the beef getting so out of hand, several members were put behind bars in the late noughties, but we're going to get into that feud in detail shortly. Late What's really noughties. important to know is that just like OFB, the younger generations of rappers that rep NPK will go on to release drill music, with the most notable crew emerging from this area rapping under the name Sin Squad, with their most high profile rappers being GP, aka Gunner Pumps, KK, LR, Bully B, Unks, 
Tugger, who is actually SJ's half-brother, Stewie, oh, Emlu, yeah. Sneaks, okay, Shems, yes, Trills, yeah. and Osaf. A lot of these guys were close to OFB rappers growing up, and as we'll see as the story goes on, they would end up riding together on more than just tracks. With a murder carried out by members of both OFB and MPK, leading to a bitter split between the former group of friends, a feud which will get very ugly indeed. But before we move on to the next section, I also just want to say that there's another crew called AP from Enfield, aka Skengfield, with Ordnance Road being a prominent street in this area. And if you listen to music by rappers from Wood Green or Edmonton, you might hear them dissing this area in their music. And you might also hear about a group called TPL, which is Turnpike Lane, another separate crew who tend to have beef with OFB and do have some pretty good rappers as part of their lineup. But for the sake of simplicity, we're not really going to get into AP, TPL or any other crews in this video, just so it's easier to understand. Anywho, now you know about OFB and NPK, the red and purple rocking crews from Tottenham, it's time to find out about their sworn enemies who we will be focusing on in this video. A couple of crews who come together under the colour green to wage war on anybody from Tottenham. And now, a word from our sponsor. Sponsored by Prada Iversy. Protect your identity. The true card is amazing. Avoid the bad intent. I go that way now. Slash trap. Also around 10 minutes away from Broadwood <coughs> Farm is an area called Wood Green. And the gang that historically runs things in this area is known as MOB, or Money Over Bitches. The Wood Green mob are based in the N22 postcode, which is why they're also sometimes referred to as the 22 or 22 mob, or just the twos, with the important landmarks in the area being the estates around Commerce yeah, Road and the Sky City estate, a strange residential yeah, complex in well. the sky built on top of a Wood Green shopping mall. Wood Green is an area historically much more focused on street activity than music. Originating as the Wood Green firm in the 90s, back in the day, the youths in this area were much more interested in robbing than drilling or rapping. With a 2002 Wood Green robbery crew getting hit with heavy sentences after a ruthless mugging campaign in the area, where the court was told members of the gang were willing to pull shanks for a as little as one pound. And apparently this crack crew of armed robbers was so good at their jobs that it was reported that street crime in the area went down by a whopping 33% after their conviction. Now, the Wood Green mob didn't originally have a feud with groups from Tottenham until the end of the mid noughties where a series of tit-for-tat violent clashes saw Wood Green and Tottenham members hating each other. But again, we'll get into that as the story goes on. Ultimately, the young tough guys from Wood Green were pretty fearless and weren't afraid of having beef with anyone no matter where they're from. With the Wood Green mob ending up in violent feuds with crews all over London, including AP from Enfield, 8th from Hornsey, 9th Street, and Hoxton gangs in the N1 postcode, just to name a few. Now those feuds aren't super important to this story, but there is one big name that is going to be super relevant to what's going to go down in this video. And that name belongs to the infamous Wood Green gang member Lance, aka Dip Dat, aka Dipper Dan, a supposedly feared member that put in a lot of work on the streets for the gang. Story goes, Lamps was a wood green bully with ops in Tottenham and far beyond, apparently living in fear of him pulling up on their block. And hell, if this footage is anything to go by, it looked like he had the police quaking in their boots too. <laughs> Shut up, bro. Shut up, bro. Shut up, bro. Ruthless knife men who ended up with the nickname Shank Stars. Apparently, these guys were so regularly <coughs> using knives and shanks that the entire area of Edmonton was even referred to as Shank Town because people were so scared of knife crime in the area. And affiliates of the group who rapped even released early music under the banner of Shank Stars. But in the modern day, the most significant crews coming out of Edmonton represent N9. But more importantly, N9 also spawned arguably the biggest UK drill artist to ever come out of this country, Tion Wayne who was road rapping back with his N9 homie <coughs> Caution all the way back in 2010, with Tion just beginning to make waves in the British rap scene in the mid-2010s along with his right-hand man, Turner. Now, there's a whole bunch of other Nine boys who have touched the mic on and off over the years, many of whom you can see in the 2015 N9 Tim Westwood crib session, including people like Terminator. Another rapper that has to get an honorable mention from the area is A1 from the Nine, even though he said I was gonna get shot on Instagram. But in modern day drill, aside from Tion and Turner, the hottest thing coming out of Edmonton is the youngest set of drill rappers who go by the name three times three, which if you're a true internet detective, you'll realize quickly adds up to nine. I bet that really keeps the cops off their tail. I mean, I'm trying to gangbang, not have a maths test anyway. There's a handful of three times three rappers who are making a lot of noise recently, particularly E1, another green bandana rocking rapper who seemingly has zero fear of the police. Keep, it stepping. Keep it stepping, keep it stepping, keep it stepping. Get the fuck, get the fuck off the block, get the fuck off the block. I want you in that fucking vehicle now, now. 
Mate, if you come in, you can't- Get in there! Oi, open that door! Open that door! Then, of course, there's ZT, the self-proclaimed CSS chest shot <laughs> specialist. You gotta it again. you know, he'll yeah. shank you in the chest. Now, 3 times 3 in the 9 have other rappers that are affiliated with the area, and apologies to anyone from Edmonton who didn't get a mention, but you know how it goes, there's too many names. So, let's take a closer look at some of the events that caused the decades-long deadly war between Tottenham and Edmonton. Welcome back, sire. You're so the war between Tottenham and the Greens has been going on for literally decades. And as a result of the violence spilling out on the streets, the feud is very well known to the police. What we do know is there is a long-standing and very violent feud between gangs in Wood Green and a rival gang in the Tottenham area. However, recently with the rise of social media and the popularity of drill music, people on the internet have never been so desperate to find out what's actually going on in the streets between these two warring groups. Many scoreboard videos are floating around the internet claiming to detail the many shootings and stabbings that have gone down between specific members of these groups, usually based on rumours from internet forums, but this isn't that kind of video. Instead today, we're going to be taking an overall look at all of the most serious incidents in these areas that at least made it to the news or social media, following along how the war on the street ended up spawning several rappers from each area who would go on to give detail about the beef in the streets in lyrics of their music. Now, much like we've discussed in videos about the deadly gang wars in Chicago and Jacksonville in the past, this beef started as simply as just teenagers from these two different areas having after-school fistfights back in the early noughties, with these fistfights eventually escalating to knife fights, and unfortunately from there it didn't take long for firearms to enter the mix, and soon the clashes between these two groups would become deadly. A big escalation came in 2005 when an MPK member was attacked and stabbed by four shank stars at a Texaco gas station being left with serious injuries. This led to numerous mass brawls and tit-for-tat violence in the area, and so while the MPK and the Edmonton shank stars are warring, so too are Tottenham star gang warring with the Wood Green mob. In fact, it was reported that around 20 violent incidents where weapons were used took place between Wood Green and Tottenham in an eight-week period in early 2005. This included the shooting of a 17-year-old on Broadwater Farm, three shootings in one day in April, and a hit and run on Wood Green High Road that ended up injuring an innocent eight-year-old. With these back and forths leading up to another incident in 2005 where this beef reached deadly new heights. As on May the 1st, 2005, 22-year-old Andre Linton from Tottenham is shot dead at close range after his car was surrounded by six youths in Wood Green. Somebody involved in the incident was identified as Jermaine Campbell, who courts were told was a member of Wood Green mob. In fact, the very same person had actually been sentenced to three years back in 2002 for being part of that notorious Wood Green mugging squad. And after being found guilty of the murder, he would end up being sentenced to 25 years in prison. Apparently showing no remorse to the very end, coldly taunting his victims in court, winking and making shooting hand gestures towards them from the dock. It's no surprise then that retaliations were seen in the area, with Get Back getting deadly on the 28th of October 2006, when a Wood Green mob affiliate named Jerome Vassal was shot in the head outside of a Wood Green community centre. A shooting which left him brain damaged and paralysed, with it taking over a year for him to succumb <laughs> to his injuries and eventually pass away. Eight people were arrested in this incident, but none were charged. At this point, the streets were super hot and the beef between these areas was getting serious. And at a certain point, an alliance forms between the Wood Green mob and the Edmonton Shank Stars. And so, stylized in green, Wood Green to Edmonton Green would become known collectively as Green City. With green bandanas signifying alliances between sets that operate in these areas, suddenly their beef with the crews in Tottenham throwing up the red bandanas and NPK Rock in Purple was looking like some real Bloods and Crips shit, or Grove Street versus the Ballers, actually, if you think about it. In 2007 and 2008, the beef only intensified with more bloody battles between these two groups taking place. This included another mass brawl outside of a Texaco again, of all places. I swear drill rappers are sponsored by petrol stations or something. Anywho, with so much crime and violence spilling into the streets, the battle between Tottenham and Edmonton would eventually reach the police's radar, especially in November 2007, when a massive street fight took place between members of NPK and Shank Stars, where numerous people were left with stab injuries, and the court being told that those responsible went on to rap about the crimes in songs. In the end, the police used DNA evidence to slap heavy sentences on members from both sides, and the increased police attention that was placed on the groups around this time definitely had the block hot for a couple of years. And as these years went by, new generations of tough guys emerged from the same areas, eventually inheriting the beef from their elders, and repeating the cycles of violence seen by previous generations. Mass brawls and stabbings in Wood Green continued through 2008, and with police vowing to put a stop to the violence, cops 
comfortable trying out new techniques of calming things down, including banning people from their own areas to try and stop violence being committed. In fact, the guy from this article who was banned from Wood Green was another early rapper called G Money. Again, this was back in 2009 when UK rap that was about street goings on was referred to as road rap. And at this point, there was way less money or clout in the rap game than there would be later when the UK drill scene had flourished. In fact, around this time, many of the young men associated with these areas begun to dabble with music, releasing road raps of their own. Tion Wayne from The Nine was dropping songs, and the future OFB pioneers like Heady One and RV were dropping wood green disses recorded on their block. But it would be nearly 10 years before rappers from both of these areas would be considered greats. And in that time, there would be an insane amount of bloodshed, as individuals would end up being killed on both sides of this beef, and with details about the goings on in the dangerous underworld of North London, eventually finding its way into those road raps. Maybe you see some lights on these lights is bright in the bitch. North London was not a safe place to be in the decade that followed. And for a long stretch of time, it seemed like murder after murder was taking place in these areas. In April 2011, 15-year-old Negus McLean, aka Chop, labelled by the BBC as a member of Edmonton N9 based set called Dem Africans Gang, was murdered by a gang hunting posse of four, armed with knives stabbing him to death in a grisly incident that was described in court. Four people were later found guilty of murder in this case, apparently members of Enfield's EN3 Get Money Gang. Another murder in the area, which is wrapped about by 3 times 3 members frequently, occurred at 9.45pm on Monday the 1st of April 2013, when 19-year-old Mohammed Hussein, aka Chicken, was killed by a shotgun blast on Bounces Road in Edmonton following an argument, with the news reporting the scene as something straight out of an old western movie, with 21-year-old Nat Neil Tesfe given a life sentence for the murder which authorities said was gang-related, with the modern-day rappers from 3 times 3 frequently rapping that he should be free. Jumping forward to 2015, the blocks in the area were incredibly hot, as a lot of violence played out on both sides of the fence. On the 10th of January 2015, a teenager in Wood Green is murdered in his ends following a knife fight. That same month, an 18-year-old from Tottenham who went by the name Prophet, real name Isaiah Ekpaloba, robbed a home of a member of the Wood Green mob named JD before trying to flee in a taxi. He was chased with a knife by JD and eventually murdered, with JD from Wood Green being charged with the murder and getting life in jail. And it's around this moment that the streets begun to interact with the music, as A1 from The Nine dropped his song Op uh, Part 2, where he dissed Prophet as well as other people associated with OFB. However, Prophet wasn't the only fallen soldier from the area who would end up getting mentioned in music. On June the 15th, 2015, 22-year-old Lukey Maxwell was murdered in a stabbing in Northumberland Park. Lukey was well known to rappers from the area, particularly Tottenham grime legend Skepta, who ended up making the tribute song Lukey World, that even the king of rap himself, Drizzy Drake, ended up sharing in the form of a picture of himself wearing a Lukey World t-shirt. Now, someone was charged in that case with murder, but those charges were eventually dropped. Also in June 2015, Renea Campbell, aka Mello from Wood Green, is stabbed to death outside a party, with two people eventually being convicted from Northumberland Park in so with this deadly beef going down in the streets, you'd think the safest place to be would be inside. But hell, even in prison, members from these areas are getting touched. In October 2016, Jamal Mahmood, aka Chaos, is murdered in HMP Pentonville Prison, being stabbed in an argument allegedly over a parcel of drugs, before being thrown over the railings of the landing, dropping about 30 feet. The alleged killers beat their case once again, with the media identifying Chaos as a member of the GMG gang from Enfield. So again, whilst not actually part of this beef, Chaos is another name that would go on to be heavily disrespected by 3 times 3 members in their raps. In fact, it really seemed like the trend of smoking dead ops on social media was also really taking off in North London around this time. Another AP member from Enfield known as Skengs, apparently the brother of Chaos who was murdered in prison, is seen on social media dissing Wood Green and saying he's smoking mellow in 2016. I can share the thing mellow to the dome. Then, completely independently of the beef between these two areas, in December 2019, Skengs is murdered by one of the customers he sold drugs to, apparently beating him with a claw hammer and stabbing him to death, then putting the murder weapons and the body in a big sheet that he hid in his attic, with the crime only being discovered a whopping eight months later, after the killer bragged to his friends about the crime and even showed somebody the rotting body in the attic. Now, eventually, two people are jailed for this crime. That story's just wild, and you know what? It really reminded me, actually, of what happened to Corbin Johnson, who went missing for 
an entire year in the video I did on the deadly gang war in Jacksonville. And just like Corbin, following his passings, Skengs was disrespected on numerous songs by the likes of 3x3, with some even being seen on social media smashing up a mural to Skengs in his area. Now look, not everything I've mentioned up until this point is necessarily connected or related. What I'm trying to do is just give you a backdrop to the wild shit that was going on in this area during the time that UK drill music as we know it today was finding its voice. This is the environment drill rappers were coming up in, and these are the situations that they would be speaking about in their music. And over time, a lot of young men from these areas would begin to release absolutely fire music, finally getting themselves a chance to make money legally and get into a lucrative career on a path of safety away from the streets. But for some, even with the opportunity of going straight through music on the table, the temptation to slip back into old habits comes strong. And time after time, the unfortunate truth is it seems like people from this area were forced to choose a safe career making music and staying away from the streets, or choose violence. What's new? An award-winning Texas vodka, seven times distilled for a clean premium taste. That's what's new. We're going to stop it right here, my brothers and sisters. Stay tuned for part two and three. They're coming very soon, my brothers and sisters. We're on the road to being subscribers. Make sure you click the last uh, London Game War reaction that I did, you know what I'm saying? Like the video, comment, subscribe, follow my Instagram at the official link in the description. And I'm out of here, gang. Word.